Now I'm just having a few problems here because what's happening is it's getting really crowded in the centre of this basket and I'm struggling to get this cane through and I've gone for quite a thick strong cane to start with and I, I tend to like to use thicker cane on the on the base of the basket anyway because it just gives that uh, uh, longevity to the basket. But because it's so thick I'm struggling to, uh, uh, to make a stitch here and the bone needle is just a bit too wide to make the right kind of hole. So I've got another tool, which is a little spike here. This is really very sharp, so you've got to be careful when you're using this. And what I'm essentially going to do is use this to puncture a hole exactly through the basket where I want that hole to go so that I can thread the cane through. So in this case, um, I want to come round and do another stitch round here. So I really want to go in between these two. And I've got the added problem that the little butt end that I folded over to get that bind right at the beginning is just sticking out. And I, I don't want to trim that anymore because I don't want the, to lose the straw through the bind. So I'm going to leave that like that. I'm just going to have the bind over it. So what I need to do is to come through here. And you really do need to force the issue. So you just need to make sure that your fingers are well clear on the other side and it's a very very just force it through like that there we go okay and then give it a little wiggle just to make the right sized hole okay and then having made the hole it should be he says easier to get the bind through there we go that's gone through quite nicely now he says, oh, yeah, it's good, it's good, good, strong cane, though. So a nice little tool, that, and, and it's always worth having for when you're working with really quite tough materials. The bone is fantastic. It's lightweight, and, and when the material's loose enough, it binds really easy with it. But you don't want to force the issue with the bone because that's a very valuable tool for me, and I don't want to splinter it and, and break the bone by just trying to ask it to do too big a job. But there we go, and I'm just binding that nice and tight. Okay, and we're just starting to get a little bit of evenness around here. That's looking really quite nice, that. Okay, so same again. I want to go in next time. I want to come back up through. My bind wants to come back up through here. Okay, let's just get him out of the way. Just up through there. So what I'm going to do is get my little bodkin tool here. If you haven't got one of these, what you can do is just use a, a, a screwdriver, a very thin screwdriver. Sometimes like an electrical screwdriver is quite good. If you need to, just sharpen the edge of that off. But I'm just going to drive that through and then I'm going to try and pick my spot on the other side. Remembering, of course, just to keep my hands nice and free. So I'm going to come here through here like that. And now we can see the bodkin going in. And it's, it's a little bit loose there, but that'll all bind up nice and tight when we start to do the next two or three rounds. OK, so there's our hole. Make sure you don't lose it after you've made it. Okay, and that should come through there. Okay, so having made the stitch now, I can just pull that bit of cane through. There we are. Okay, and this is just starting to starting to feel a little bit more even. There's some untidy bits here. Let's not worry about those for now. Let's just get this, this next bind right, okay? We, we want it to be around here, so what I want to try and do is just manipulate that bind a little bit. And when you've got wet materials, they often, they often grip better than dry materials, okay? Once you get a lock on, they tend to hold on because they're all sort of swollen. And the other thing with the straw, this twist that I'm doing, what it's doing is actually twisting against the cane. So as I tighten the cane, the twist of the straw is acting against the bind of the cane just to hold it really tight. So I can pull that in there, just a little bit of manipulation with the fingers as well. I can pull that in there, and there we go. That's holding quite nicely for me. <clears throat> it might slacken up a bit as I make the next bind, but I can just see <coughs> a bit of straw in the back of my throat. But, <coughs> but you can just tighten up that bind. And that should hold. Okay, so let's go again with my little bodkin. I'll just really work that. You can see here in my shed that I have such a great affection for the bramble that I'm actually allowing one 
to grow in the shed. It's come from outside somewhere, worked its way in, and I can't bring myself to cut it down because I'm such a huge admirer of this plant. I cut enough of them down, so it's only fair that I should let this one live and watch the work that I'm doing with its relatives. Okay, there we go, we've got a nice little bind in there. Um, just keeping it tidy as I go along. Just keep that nice and tidy. It's always a nice thing to do. And at this point, we're starting to make a decision as well about what's the inside of the basket and what's the outside of the basket. And it kind of depends on the size and shape of the basket as to whether you have the inside of the basket in here. <clears throat> so, like so. This becomes the base of the basket. This is a more attractive piece of work. You'll be doing your, your tying off, your knotting on the inside. And you might do that if you've got a basket that's coiling up. So you can't really see the base of it. The inside of the base, that is. But if you're making a basket that's sort of fanning out like so, you don't really want all your stitches on the base because you're looking straight down at your stitches um, on, the, on the inside of the base. So you might want to keep your stitches on the outside of the base. So it depends on the shape of your basket. But what we're going to try and do is keep our stitches anyway, nice and neat and tidy. It's not always possible, but the tidier we, can, we get them, the less you can see them. And there's a way, certain way of hiding some of your, your binds as well. Okay, so here we go, putting a little twist on there. And that's my hole, that's where I want to go. Looks like he's already been there before there. That's easy enough. Just come through there. And uh, just make sure I'm manipulating that straw as well as I'm going round. There we go. Okay, that's looking nice. Nice and tidy. Now I'm getting to the stage where this cane's getting getting short. So what I'm gonna to, wanna to do now is I wanna tie them off, okay? I haven't really got enough for another bind. So what I'm gonna try and do is just get over the top of this coil and then fix it off on what will effectively be, I think will probably be the outside of the basket. So <clears throat> it's never a given that there's an obvious one to tie it off to on the other side. It is when you get further along the basket, but here you can see as I've come over there, my obvious candidate for trying to bind this off was probably going to be this one here. It's a nice strong bit of cane. And this is where, again, this needle comes in handy because what I need to do is just position that under that bit of cane. So I've got a nice tight bind on here. And what I can do is just come straight in there and pull him through like that. Okay. Just take that needle out and let's just check that's looking all right. This last bind, it's always tricky to get it to really tie off nice and even. And then I just fold it back on itself like so. And I'm just looking for one to thread it under. So I'll probably go for this fella here, another nice strong cane. And this will become much more logical when you get into the meat of the basket and I'll, I'll explain it more there. As I say, when you're starting off, it's always a bit of a scrappy affair. Okay, and you can see here, you can see where that bind is. We've used two bits of cane so far. That's looking pretty good, but I've got to keep up the work. One of the things you need to make sure you do all the time is keep this well stocked. Because if you run thin here, it can create problems further down the basket. Um, and just make sure you're, you're doing it sort of regularly. Regular and often is much better than trying to just um, bung a whole load in there. And uh, I tend to cut a little edge on there just so it feeds through nicely okay slide that down and then I've got some resources there and what I tend to do is just draw a couple of those straws up to the sort of midway point like that okay so let's crack on let's get another bramble cane and see if we can do another two or three coils
Now I've not got a huge amount of cane here, so what I think I might do is just tie off this next one. Let's just have a look, see what I've got. It's always better to make the decision sooner rather than later and finding yourself having to unstitch a bit of basket because you just haven't got enough cane to get a good knot in. So come through there like that. Yeah, I don't think I've done one one extra stitch there, so I think now it's going to be time just to tie that basket off. So I'm just with my hands, just manipulating that bit, manipulating the straw, just getting this cane in exactly the place I want. And again, I've just used my fingers pushing that one tight. I've actually pushed it out there a little bit. Okay, so I can just now push that over. Okay, manipulate that, massage it into place almost. And what we'll do now is with this bit of cane, we'll go over the top and bind underneath. So let's just get in the right place we're going to go over there and you're looking for a good one to bind on and almost certainly that's the one we want to go for um, our options are to go either side of it and what I tend to do at the kind of early phases of, of, of building the basket is I tend to come on the inside of it I'll try and keep the stitches as close together as possible when we're starting out you'll see that they're already starting to sort of space out here Okay, so the gaps between the binds are getting bigger and bigger and there'll come a point at which we're going to want to insert stitches in there. We're not quite there at the moment, but in this case I'm going to bind off, I think, on the inside of the previous row of binding. Just to sort of, just to, just to tighten it up, just to bunch up some of these stitches. So we'll just take this needle here and work our way under here. This is a lovely needle, this. This is made from spindle wood, nice hard wood. It grows naturally in these lovely curves. And I've just cut a little groove, a little recess in there. So hopefully that should take the end of this bit of cane, which I can then just thread up through. And what the needle does is it just guides it out and away from the basket. It's a useful bit of kit. And of course, it's a piece of kit that is probably knocking around our Bronze Age, our Iron Age, and our medieval settlements, but of course, they don't survive because they're wood and they just rot away, these kind of things. But that's just a perfect, cheap, easy, but very effective hedgerow needle. Okay, so we've got a nice bind there. And because this is such a lovely stiff cane, I think I'm just going to fold myself over and come under here. Come under this one, and that's how I'm going to lock this off. Okay, let's just make sure. So we're putting our needle under there like that. It's going to be... A bit tricky just getting keeping that tight all the time we're just trying to keep that tight okay so let me just come over there like that I'm gonna go in to that needle there like that there we are lovely yeah that's nicely locked off okay and there we go we put four bits of cane on and I think we've done probably the most difficult part of the basket. And my advice would be to have a go. If it doesn't quite work out, start again. It's, it's quite important to get this right. You can always make adjustments as, as, as the basket starts to take shape. And, you know, this started out quite messy for me. And, and it was touch and go as to whether I continued or whether I started a new basket. But actually what I've managed to do is just tidy it up a bit by using the second two, the second row of stitches and the third row of stitches just to space out my work. And that's tightened up the whole thing. And you know, that is such a tough bit of basket now. It's well bound together. And you know, that's in many ways, that's the hardest part of the job done. The job that really part that requires real concentration and conviction, you know, whether to keep going. Lot to take on board there. Um, a good start. I'll make sure I keep all of the materials nice and damp so that we can come out here first thing tomorrow and crack on with the rest of the base.